Hey everyone, my name's Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today I'm gonna to show you some really easy upgrades you can make to your Creality Ender 3. Now, the Ender 3 out of the box is a phenomenal printer. These are just things that are gonna make it even better. Now, as always, everything I show you in this video, I have links for in the video description. Also, if you have any issues with any of these, feel free to either post a question in the comments here or even better, join us over on our Dragonlock Facebook group. The link for that is also in the description. We have thousands of members there with a lot of 3D printer experience. Uh, if you post a question there, you're gonna get a answer very, very rapidly. We do lots of troubleshooting every day for people there. If you're having a problem with your machine or a question about slicer settings or having uh, problems identifying what's going wrong with the print, come over there, post your questions, and we will get you helped out. So let's get started. Okay, the first upgrade we're gonna do is an electronics box fan cover. And this is one of my big gripes with the Ender 3 is the cooling fan intake for the electronics box, the opening aims straight up. So you are gonna get a lot more dust in this unit all over your uh, uh, electronics board. It's also aimed up directly underneath the print uh, bed, which means when you're scraping plastic bits off of the print bed, a lot of them are going to go down into the electronics box. So this fan cover is really pr uh, the most important upgrade you can do to your Ender 3. It's very easy, printed at 0.2 layer height. If you want, just use our terrain profile for Cura and print it out. Uh, that should work fine for this. Next up is a micro SD to full size SD adapter and mount uh, for that. Uh, this is really nice. I don't like using micro SDs on something like this. It's a little bit more difficult to use and get in the small slot on the front of the unit. Uh, also, you're not putting with using this once it's plugged in. You're not putting any stress on the micro SD uh, slot that's actually um, uh, soldered to the main electronics board. Uh, over time, not on Ender 3s, but on other printers, I have seen USB connectors and micro SD connectors actually break loose from the board from repeated use. By adding this, you're eliminating putting any stress on it. Uh, next up, is a back cover for the LCD electronics. This is really nice to keep dust off of them. Uh, it's very easy upgrade to print and add on. After that, we're gonna take a look at replacing the stock print bed springs with something a little bit stronger. Uh, these are gonna ensure that you don't have to level your bed quite as often. They're gonna keep it under better tension and keep those uh, adjustment wheels from turning. Moving to the back of the machine, we're going to add some cable clips for better cable management uh, and also add drag chains to the two primary uh, cable clusters coming off of the heated print bed and going up to the uh, uh, hot end. What these do, these are going to distribute the stress of movement across the entire length of the cable and not focus it at any one point. Um, this is a very important upgrade, probably just as important as the fan cover. If you don't do this and you get a point on the cables that is consistently bending uh, as you print, you're going to start seeing breaks in those wires. And that's very dangerous on the high load uh, uh, wiring for both the heater on the print bed and for the hot end because as you break wires in that cable, it effectively reduces the gauge of the cable and you're going to create a potential fire hazard because as it's still pulling the same amount of amps, it's when you have a reduced gauge, um, you're gonna build up heat and that can potentially burn through the insulation on it and create a fire hazard. So installing these cable chains, the movement is distributed along the entire length of the cable and you don't get any one point that is going to develop a weak spot faster. So these are very, very important to do. Uh, and finally, it's important to put a filament guide. Um, what this does is helps your filament feed uh, cleanly and without hanging up uh, into your extruder and it will uh, help prevent, it won't totally prevent, but it will definitely help prevent under extrusion on your prints. All right, this is the fan opening for your electronics box. This is where we're gonna install the cover that you print off of Thingiverse. The link is in the description for the video. Just print this at 0.2 or 0.3 layer height. 
Uh, it's probably the easiest upgrade we're going to do today. You just remove these front two screws on your electronics box. You're not going to remove the cover. Leave the third screw that's in the back center in. Just take these front two off. Set them aside. Place your new cover on that you've just printed and reinstall the bolts and you're done. Like I said, totally easy upgrade. And this is going to make a huge difference in keeping your internal electronics box very clean. Next up, we're going to put a back cover on your LCD panel. This is also a very easy upgrade to do. Just print it at 0.2 or 0.3 layer height. Remove these two screws on the front of the unit and then very carefully unplug the ribbon cable from the back of the LCD screen. Now, this LCD has four screws in it. You're going to re remove all four screws, one in each corner. Just use the hex key that came with your unit and you're going to, depending on which one of these covers you've downloaded from, Univ from Thingiverse, some of them will allow you to use the stock screws. Some of them you're going to need longer screws. So if you need longer screws, they're always metric M3 by a certain length. Uh, I think the longest ones on Thingiverse when I checked were M3 by 16s for the top. That's what I had on mine. I was able to use the stock screws for the bottom two uh, screws, and I had to use M uh, 3x16s for the top two. And I'll link two screws on Amazon in the description of this video. So just replace those screws. Uh, you're putting them into the back of the cover you printed, and they just go through that um, LCD electronics board and into the uh, steel cover. So get those tightened up. You're going to want to reinstall your ribbon cable next. Uh, just plug that into that single open slot. Make sure that's down nice and tight. And then you're going to reinstall the two bolts on the front. Now, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to go ahead and install the mount for the new SD card adapter. And if I didn't, I'd have to retake the LCD off uh, later on for that because it slides on this aluminum extrusion and the LCD cover blocks that opening. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my ribbon cable is in. Once that's done and I've got the uh, mount for the SD adapter slid on, I'm going to go ahead and put the two bolts back on the front and that will finish off the upgrade for the LCD cover. Okay, with the adapter for the SD card, they're all pretty much the same whether you buy the one I link or a different one. Just feed the ribbon cable in through the back slot on the mount, pull it all the way through, and uh, the mount will just be a pressure fit for the adapter. There's various ones on Thingiverse. Just get the one suited for the adapter you buy. Uh, you're going to want to keep these cables... Uh, there's no clips I could find that really worked well for them on Thingiverse. I'm just using tape, but you do want to keep them uh, somehow attached to the aluminum extrusions. This is going to keep it out of the way and uh, keep it from being snagged on anything and yanking out. So I'm just using some rolled up blue painter's tape here. Uh, my other ender, I use black electrical tape. It really doesn't matter. You just, again, you want to have some better cable management on this and keep it out of the way so it doesn't snag. So the last thing you got to do is just plug the end into the micro SD slot on the unit and you are done with this upgrade. All right, next up is some cable clips you can download from Thingiverse. These just snap into the aluminum extrusions as shown just to give you some better wire management. Keep them out of the way so they aren't snagging on anything. In this photo on the right hand side is a uh, frame piece that snaps in over that cutaway in the aluminum extrusion. The edge of that cut area is sharp and can cut into that wiring bundle by installing this. It just eliminates that possibility. All right, next up is replacing your bed springs. Just unscrew all four adjustment wheels like I'm doing here. Uh, the bed springs are not great that come with the printer and they're going to weaken over time which means you are going to be constantly re-leveling your bed by putting stronger springs in you will go a lot longer without having to adjust your bed leveling so just slip the old spring off and put the new one on that screw do all four before you put any of the bed adjustment wheels back on when you put those wheels back on, rotate each one about four turns, then go to the next one. You want to keep it lowering that bed in an even increment. You don't want to do one wheel all the way down because that's going to bend those screws. All right, let's put some drag chains on this thing. Um, to start with, we need to clip this zip tie that is holding the cabling to the current support arm. 
So clip that very carefully. Be careful not to slip and nick your wiring at all. Um, get this zip tie off. Then you're going to see a small trapezoidal plastic cover on the top back. That just snaps off. There it is there. And that's me dropping it. Once you get that off, you're going to unscrew all four adjustment wheels from your print bed. Once those are off, you're going to be able to lift your print bed freely and get the old support arm off. Don't worry about that. Your spring is going to drop free too. Just set that aside. Um, there's the new support arm that you've printed. Now, put your old spring back on. It just slips up on that bolt. And once that's on, you want to slip that support arm next. This is very important. Do not put that bolt back through the mounting plate before you've done this. Uh, the support arm goes on top of the mount plate, not below. So it goes spring, then support arm, and then you insert the screw through the hole in the mount plate and then put your adjustment wheel back on the bottom of the mount plate there. So I'm going to screw that back on. Um, just free spin it until you get some resistance. And once you hit a little resistance, then you're going to start tightening each of the four screws about two to four turns each in succession. You don't want to crank down on any one screw too much and put stress on that bed or bend those bolts. So next up, we want to secure the wiring to the new support arm with a single zip tie. This is going to use that rearmost set of holes uh, closest to the camera here at the back edge. Do not put zip ties through the other four holes. You'll see why in a minute, but you're going to get this on. You do not want to cr uh, crank it down super tight and put a lot of stress on that wiring, but you do want it fairly tight so that it keeps the wiring from moving left to right. Uh, you want to keep it centered on this. And the reason is you don't want any movement from where this zip tie is forward to where the uh, solder points are. That will keep the solder points from having any stress on them and eventually breaking, which uh, could be a potential fire hazard. So I'm just clipping that off. Now I'm going to take my finished chain here and it's got a mount on the end and that just snaps to the support arm you just installed and you see those four holes on top you are going to put zip ties through uh, two zip ties and that will uh, secure the top mount for the drag chain to the support arm and these you can make very tight because they're not putting any direct stress on that wiring so go ahead and insert two zip ties and for the first time in my life, I actually had a defective zip tie. It didn't have the little tongue in it that actually keeps it tight. So I had to put a second one in here. There we go. Now, when that chain is on, you're going to snap the bottom mount just to the side of the aluminum extrusion. It just snaps on just like this. Apply a little pressure and it will snap in place and it will free slide front to back. Don't worry about that. That's just so you can adjust it a little bit for the length of your wiring. So get that in there. Then you're going to hold the wiring in place. Once you get it adjusted to where it fits the length of the wiring, you're going to hold the wiring in place with these little snap clips that you printed as well. So just put those in one at a time. I'm going to speed this up here so it doesn't take too long. But we'll get all those in. And one tip when you're doing this, before you put the drag chains on, make sure each link uh, rotates freely and smoothly. It may take you about 15 minutes uh, playing with each set of links. Uh, do it while you're watching TV. Just bend them back and forth a whole bunch to get them moving freely. You don't want them snagging up at all. Now, that completes the Y-axis drag chain. Now we're going to work on the X-axis drag chain. Start by putting that little mount on the aluminum extrusion. It just snaps in just like what you did in the previous step. We're going to snap our drag chain on. Again, make sure it's working freely because you don't want any points where it snags up that can uh, make it put stress on wiring at a different point and kind of defeats the purpose of having the drag chain. So mount that on, put a retention clip on. That'll hold it in place and keep your wiring in. And at this stage, you have two sets of wiring. One is a ribbon cable, one is a nylon sheath that's kind of round. The nylon sheath should be what's going against the drag chain that you're currently installing, this one. The flat ribbon cable is what goes against the retention clips. So here's the end cap for the drag chain for the x-axis drag chain here. And I'm just snapping this on. 
And as you can see, the ribbon cable goes flat against it. The nylon uh, braided uh, cable cover goes against the wider drag chain. And I'm just going to speed this up, put the retention clips in. We're going to make one change to this drag chain. There's one thing I do not like about the design, and that is the final retention clip for the end piece here. I think this holds it too tightly and that it puts too much stress on that ribbon cable. So we're just going to secure this with some zip ties. If you want to use the piece that came with it, go right ahead. This is just my preference. I've had these on my machines and I noticed it was a little bit too tight for my taste for that ribbon cable. So I'm just using zip ties through the uh, clip holes. Show you what it looks like here. I think that's a better solution, but again, that's just my opinion. Finally, for uh, this video, we're just going to install a, a filament guide. There's a bunch of different options on Thingiverse. Uh, do not install the guide that goes at the low point right in front of the extruder. I've noticed these can actually cause the filament to bend and cause under extrusion because it kinks up a little bit. Uh, I like the ones that mount on the top like this, these longer arms. They just kind of help uh, arc the filament in and guide it into the extruder nice and clean so you don't have any hangups and the resulting under extrusion. So again, there's a bunch of different ones. They just clip into that top corner like I show here. Uh, you just remove the end cap and that's it. So thank you very much for checking this video out. As always, please click the subscribe button in your bottom right hand corner. And thank you for watching.